chances are if you've never used a photo or graphics editing program before, what comes to mind is probably a Halloween mask that you wear on your face. Although that's not what a mask is in fireworks, the purpose of both types of masks is the same. In fireworks, a mask is used to either hide or show part of an object. In other words, you can use a mask to hide certain objects in a document or to give a semi-transparency to those objects. You can also use a mask to reveal certain objects while hiding the rest. We're going to focus on creating and using masks in this lesson. You'll learn how to create a bitmap mask, create auto vector masks, create a vector mask, and use the Properties panel to customize your options for masks. A bitmap mask can be created using the brush tool, other images, or selections that you create. You can create a selection using the lasso or marquee selection tools, as well as the magic wand tool. To create a mask using the brush tool, all you have to do is paint on the section of canvas that you want to use as a mask. With all masks, whether bitmap or vector, black will hide what's under the mask, white will reveal it, and gray will produce a semi-transparency. Take a look at our document. We want to create a mask that will hide the center portion of the image in our document. To do this, go to the Layers panel. Note that we have our current layer selected. Now click on the Add Mask button to create a new mask. You'll now see the new mask added to the layer. Right now the layer is transparent. We know this because it's white. Remember, black will hide the object beneath the mask, white will reveal it, and gray will produce a semi-transparency. Make sure the mask is selected. You'll see a green border around it in the Layers panel when it's selected. Now we're going to go to the Tools panel and select the Oval Marquee tool from the bitmap area. Drag your mouse over the document to create the Oval Marquee. Now select the Brush tool in the Tools panel. Go to the Properties panel to select your brush size and other options. Drag the brush across the selected area, being sure to paint in the entire oval area. Now we've masked the area inside the marquee so that the white background beneath the mask is revealed. You can also change the fill color to gray in the Tools panel to create a semi-transparency. Vector masks, also known as clipping paths, can be applied to vector shapes or images, bitmaps, groups, or even graphic symbols. A vector mask will crop or clip the objects that are beneath it to conform to the shape of its path. Think of a vector mask as a cookie cutter. There are two modes you can use for vector masks, path outline or grayscale. If you use path outline mode, the path acts as the mask. If you use grayscale appearance, the pixel values of the vector's fill, stroke, and shape are used to create the mask. Shades of gray will be used in the mask to create visible, semi-transparent, and hidden areas. An auto vector mask is a mask that you can quickly apply to any object or vector shape. Auto vector masks are neat to use because they allow you to easily apply semi-transparent masks to objects and vector shapes. Once you've created the mask, you can then edit its properties to customize it for your needs. To create an auto vector mask, first select the object or vector shape that you want to use. We've selected the first shape at the bottom of our image. Now go to Commands, Creative, Auto Vector Mask. In the Auto Vector Mask dialog box, you'll see different masks that you can apply. Notice the solid gray areas of each mask. As we stated earlier in this lesson, gray means that the mask will be semi-transparent. The gray and white checkered areas are completely transparent. Select the mask that you want to use and then click Apply. Now take a look at the Properties panel. As you can see, it's a grayscale appearance mask. You can edit the properties of the mask here as well. If you click on the swatch to the right of the paint bucket, you can change the gradient of the mask. This will alter or adjust the gray areas in the mask. Remember, shades of gray in the mask determine the parts that show, are semi-transparent, or are hidden. You can also determine the fill for the gradient. From left to right, there's no fill, solid fill, gradient fill, and pattern fill. Let's change our mask to no fill. As you can see, no fill removes the grays from our mask so that the whole object is visible. Since the gradient fill was the one we used in the original mask, let's take a look at pattern fill. When you click on pattern fill, you'll see the pattern pop-up menu. Choose a pattern from the pattern drop-down. You can also set the type of edge that you want for your fill. Once you've decided on the type of fill, you can also choose a stroke color and width. Then decide if you want to align the stroke to the outside, inside, or center. 
In Fireworks, you can use a vector shape as a mask. To do this, draw a vector shape that you want to use as a mask. Now use the Pointer tool to select the object beneath the mask, then go to Edit, Cut. Now select your mask and then go to Edit, Paste as Mask. To paste the object inside the mask, go to Edit, Paste Inside to paste the image inside the masked area. In the last section of this lesson, we created a mask using the Path Outline mode. Let's do that again and then show you how to create a mask in the Grayscale Appearance mode. As you can see, we've created a vector shape. We're going to follow the steps that we just learned to create the mask and then choose Edit, Paste Inside. Now we're going to go to the Layers panel and select the mask. Now take a look at the Properties panel. As you can see, we've created a Path Outline mask. Let's change that to a Grayscale Appearance. Click the Gradient Fill button in the Properties panel as we did with Auto Vector Masks. You could also click on the No Fill, Solid Fill, or Pattern Fill button. We just chose Gradient Fill for demonstration purposes. You can also choose a Blend Mode. Let's choose Luminosity.